People say moves like the planche, the front lever, iron cross and one arm pull up are the most coveted moves in calisthenics and bodyweight training, but I disagree. I think it's a lot simpler than that and a lot more basic. I think there's one move that unites us all and one move that almost everybody got into this style of training in order to seek out and get for themselves. Yep, you've got it. The muscle up, aka the ability to pull high and fast and essentially fly over that pull up bar. I've had multiple requests to do this video before now, and even over the years, I've had many people ask me what the secrets are to pulling high, and it's something I've got a lot of experience with. And for our purposes, I just want to clarify that we are talking pull power that carries over to the strict bar muscle up, or even as far as the explosive bar muscle up. And of course, when people talk about this, they want to know what the perfect drill is. They don't want to go technical. They don't want to hear a long speech or a massive write-up. They just want one simple cue or one thing that's going to fix their muscle up and make them pull higher today. Well, what that cue usually is for me, and it's probably going to be the case for you and everyone else watching this, it is as follows. Just pull higher. And when you think you're pulling high enough and pulling fast enough, you can always pull higher and faster. Never forget that. I know, I know. So everybody keeps saying, but I keep trying and no matter what I do, I just can't seem to pull high enough. Don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. It's cool. It's cool. Calm down. I've got your back. So this is what we're going to tackle in today's video, okay? We are going to look at how to develop more power in your pulling and why you might not have enough power at the moment and show you some drills or basically break this down to a simple starting point of where you can get working today. But before we do that, we need a little breakdown of the pull-up styles that are going to be applicable for muscle-up training. And it all starts with basically putting a little spin on the normal pull-up, adding a little bit of a boost to it and making the normal pull-up a chest-to-bar pull-up where the chest touches the bar. So here are the following styles in no particular order of chest-to-bar pull-ups that you will find in the bodyweight training world. We have the dead hang arch without the dead stop. So this is where your shoulders are retracted and you are pulling the bar to your chest while your back is arched and you're not stopping at the bottom. Then we have its brother, the dead hang arch with the dead stop, which is essentially the exact same movement, but only you're stopping now in between each rep and killing all momentum, resetting and generating power without the stretch reflex. Then changing the body shape somewhat from there, we have the hollow body. So this is where your body is hollow and tight and your legs are slightly in front of the hips and you're pulling in more of like a C shape. This can also be done with a dead stop. And it can also be done with what we call the muscle-up pendulum or the forward swing. Funnily enough, if we were to order them in terms of difficulty, it would actually be in the reverse order that I've said them. So we've got the hollow body with the muscle-up pendulum probably being the easiest, followed by the hollow body pull without the dead stop in second place. Then moving on from there, it's the hollow body pull with the dead stop. Then the arched pull without the dead stop and then the arch pull with the dead stop. I think that's a pretty safe hierarchy in terms of difficulty. Now, for our purposes in the video, we want to be doing the hollow body with the muscle up pendulum, and we are gonna add a band to this to get you guys started. Now, in the bodyweight training community, a lot of people shit all over bands and say that they're bad, but for our purposes here, if you currently can't touch the bar to your chest without excessively kipping and don't quite have the strength and power to do that, a band is gonna be your best friend. So you're gonna need to find yourself a moderate band, not too thick, nor too thin, and you're gonna have to loop it around a pull-up bar and it's important here as well that you step off the bar. So don't chuck a band over the bar, jump up to a bar and then try and wrestle your way into the band. That's just gonna waste energy and you're not gonna have the right grip. So always use a step, whether that's a box, a bench, a step ladder, whatever, or a bar that you can reach so that you can get a slight overgrip with your hands. You wanna get your knuckles kind of wrapped over the bar a little bit so where the bar is sitting closer to the heel of your hand as opposed to the fingertips. From there, you're just gonna practice stepping off the box, you're into the band, you're gonna swing slightly in front of the bar while still maintaining that hollow shape. It's important here as well at the front of the swing that you're gonna open your shoulders overhead so you feel a stretch in your lats, but at the same time, your body stays in a straight line from the hands, going through the elbows, through the shoulders, down through the torso, crossing the hip joint and the knee joint. So you're staying aligned, and then as your body naturally wants to swing backwards, you're going to pull hard 
and high. The band is also going to assist you. You're going to try and think about pulling the elbows down and back behind you and almost looping your chest over the bar so the pull looks like it's in an actual like an arc shape. So this is essentially a muscle up pull, but you're not going to worry about trying to get over the bar. You are just going to worry about pulling the chest to the bar. So trying to touch the bar somewhere around the line of your nipples would be great. And the firmer that you touch the bar and the more consistently you touch the bar, the better. Once you find the band that allows you to do this kind of contact on your chest, you're going to build up from one rep up to three reps. And you want these three reps to look almost exactly the same. So the contact on the bar feels the same. It's the same height and it's the same kind of velocity overall. Once you can do that, I want you to gradually work up to being able to do three sets of three with as much rest as you need, probably as high as five minutes between sets if you need. And this is where people go wrong, is what they do here is that they think they can rest less time because they're only doing three reps and three pull-ups, let's face it, aren't hard. But if you're doing three pull-ups as high and as fast as possible and really trying for it, there's no way your nervous system's gonna be recovered enough to go again. So you're gonna need probably at least three minutes to generate that kind of velocity. Velocity. So don't get caught up getting bored and thinking like you should go again before the actual rest time because what you'll see is you just won't pull high enough or hard enough. From there on out, it's really simple. Just reduce the band resistance and repeat the process until you're able to do, let's say, three sets of one with uh, no band and then you build up to doing three sets of three body weight without the band. And another common complaint here is people are going to be saying, yeah, but what about weighted pull-ups? I can do weighted pull-ups, but yeah, I just can't pull high. Well, although weighted pull-ups are a great exercise, they aren't necessarily the best choice here because when they're very, very heavy, they tend to slow you down and reduce the range of motion. Let's face it, the heavier you lift, the harder it is to get high above the bar and you'll end up just about getting the chin above the bar and obviously pulling nowhere near to the chest. So although weighted pull-ups can be useful for muscle-up training and sort of chest-to-bar and high pull-up training, you really Really have to get the weight right so you want to choose a weight where you're still not kind of forced to slow down too much and you can still pull relatively high i would say at least collarbones to the bar any less than that and it's not going to have the same carryover and also the weight if you go super super heavy is going to pull you more into an arched body shape rather than a hollow shape so the specificity and the crossover isn't going to be good enough to give you that kind of high muscle up based pull. If we look at the world of powerlifting, they've kind of got this right because they have speed days where they'll use like 50% of their max, keep the reps low, do high sets and just focus on moving that bar as fast as possible. So this is what you have to do when it comes to power training. You've also got to understand that uh, there are natural limitations in fiber types. Some people here have always been sort of fast at sprints and good at jumping and quite quite powerful. Other people always struggle when it comes to speed. So in high school, if you were more of an 800 meter runner, then you're always going to maybe find it you know, harder to be as naturally as explosive as some of these muscle up beasts that are banging out super, super explosive pulls and muscle ups. But nevertheless, you can certainly work with what you've got and you can definitely, definitely improve it. Now we're going to cover advancing this high pull. So what to do once you've got your three by three with the forward swing muscle up technique high pulls. We will then again move on to the dead stop. This is where you basically eliminate the forward swing. So you will step off the bar of your grip set. You will literally pause completely dead, keep that hollow shape and explode without any forward inertia. You will build back up to doing three sets of three in however long it takes you. The next progression from there is adding a little bit of weight to it. What can work well here is ankle weights. So putting say five kilos on your ankles and repeating the process. This will teach you to basically explode with added weight so that when you're not using weight, your body basically feels a lot more powerful and stronger. Some other kind of lesser seen techniques that we can use as well are using the band but this time going against the band rather than letting it help us, we can anchor it to a kettlebell or dumbbell in front of us, tie it to a weight belt and adjust the level of resistance accordingly so that as you start to pull towards the chest, the band is at its strongest point and is basically pulling you back down. So you have to generate power to basically overcome the band and win the battle. And another way of doing this is to wear like a black T-shirt and put a chalk mark on the bar. So you're going to basically layer the bar with some chalk pull to a certain point each time and see where the marks are on your chest. And if there's any drop-offs, you know that you're kind of losing power. If you can consistently see the one white mark in the same place, all three reps, you know that you're doing it properly. Of course, no walkthrough or tutorial will be complete without other options in terms of assistant methods. So some things that can help you here, believe it or not, when building power, 
as basic as it gets, we've got the dead stop ring or bar row, so using an overhand grip, basically stopping in the bottom, pulling the scapula back all in one motion, and then powering the rings or the bar towards your chest. As you get more advanced to this, you can kind of scale this like you would a high pull-up and start pulling the rings lower and lower down the body, almost emulating an arc row, which will basically look like a, a front lever row with your feet on the ground. If you get the angle right on this, this can be way, way harder than some of the chest to bar pull-ups. And essentially, it is leading us towards a tucked front lever row or even a front lever L row, which has a similar kind of pulling pattern and similar pulling muscles to pulling high, even in a pull-up position. Tuck or full L-sit pull-ups as well can be useful here because obviously they are exaggerating the hollow body and they are pushing your center of mass backwards, stretching your lats a little bit further and therefore making it even harder to generate force. If you can get to the point where you can pull the chest to the bar in a strict dead, dead stop L-sit, then you know you've got all the power in the world to do it without your legs in an L-sit. And a few other tips that should seem obvious but may be overlooked. You need to be quite lean and you need your body weight to be light. So if you are carrying excess body fat or you're just sitting at a slightly higher weight than you need to be, it can be worth cutting a few kilos, really leaning up. This can make a night and day difference to your performance here. Also, you never really want to be trying this movement if you're not fresh. You need to be fully powerful. It needs to be done at the start of your sessions and you need to keep the volume low and the quality high, which basically means monitoring velocity drop off. This is something that you'll get with experience. You're basically going to keep a real eye on how fast you're moving. If you feel like you really are pulling slow and sluggishly then you're going to cap your sets or maybe even cap the exercise for the day and move on to the other stuff you're training so as a recap a little cocktail for you here you're going to start with the band the swing technique where you're going to master just swinging forwards using the band and teaching your body what it feels like to touch the bar of the chest in that nice tight body shape even if you're relying on the band at first you're going to gradually build the volume here then you're gonna to look to eradicate the band and start exploring other options that are slightly harder. So you're gonna basically challenge the body as it gets stronger. You're gonna keep in mind that there are also plenty of assistance exercises like rows, like arc rows, front lever rows, L-sit high pulls, even in a tuck or a full L. You need to be lean and you need to make sure that you don't train when your power's gone. So don't overtrain this, don't try and force it. If you're not having a fast day, leave it a day or two, come back to it again when you're fresher. It will feel better, I promise. There is a lot to be said for recovery. The hardest part here is being patient enough to want to wait it out. But when you wait it out, sometimes when you come back, your joints feel good, your nervous system's fresh you can start making progress again. As always, guys, if that helped you out, please leave me a thumbs up below. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I appreciate having you on board. Any other ideas for future videos, leave them down in the comments below. And ultimately, I hope this tutorial adds something you may not have seen from other tutorials. And good luck in your journey towards the high pull-up and the muscle-up. And as I said at the beginning, remember, you can never pull high enough or hard enough. Even when you think you're pulling high enough or hard enough, you can always pull higher and harder. Until the next video, guys, peace out.